Rio de Janeiro for teachers in the seaside megacity, Rio de Janeiro's surge in violence has meant making a life-or-death judgment call with unnerving frequency, deciding whether to cancel classes because of nearby shootouts. For police officers, it has meant burying 119 of their own so far this year and surrendering ever more territory to drug gangs that have resumed open-air sales in teeming communities that had been declared pacified just a few years ago. Many ordinary residents of the city of about 6.5 million start the day scanning mobile apps that track live reports of gunfire before planning their commutes. A little more than a year since Rio de Janeiro hosted a largely successful Summer Olympics, Brazil's showcase city is plagued by a rise in lawlessness reminiscent of its darkest periods in the 1980s and 1990s. There were 4,974 people killed in Rio de Janeiro state, with a population of about 16.5 million, during the first nine months of this year, up 11% from last year, according to state government statistics. The rise in violent crime here is part of a nationwide trend that experts say has been exacerbated by Brazil's economic recession, by corruption that has hollowed out government coffers, and by fierce competition between drug trafficking organizations. Last year, there were 61,619 people killed across Brazil, according to data compiled by Brazilian Forum on Public Security, making it the deadliest year on record. Facing a budget deficit and increasingly well-armed and organized drug cartels, officials in Rio de Janeiro have turned to the federal government for a bailout and to the military for backup. The situation is one of complete vulnerability, said Antonio Carlos Costa, the head of Rio de Paz, an organization that supports victims of violence. The weapons used by the traffickers are weapons of war. The resurgence of violence comes after what had been tangible, but short-lived gains in reducing the city's crime. In 2008, when Brazil was preparing to host the 2014 World Cup, and was bidding for the 2016 Olympics, government officials launched an ambitious plan to secure the city's favelas, a patchwork of unplanned hillside communities that had long been neglected by the government. A system of community policing was established and law enforcement officers were rewarded when they met crime reduction targets. It amounted to a counterinsurgency strategy. So-called pacification police units established in the favelas were envisioned as the first step to bringing state services to the areas. A steady police presence was supposed to root out the organized crime networks that had become the de facto authority in the favelas and then the plan called for gradually expanding access to decent sanitation, health care and education to the historically marginalized communities. For a few years, the plan appeared to get traction. From a peak of 65 violent deaths per 100,000 Rio de Janeiro state residents in 1994, the rate dropped to 29 in 2012. A $10.7 billion investment in infrastructure before the 2016 Games brought hope that the Olympics would serve as a catalyst to reduce inequality in a city where exorbitant wealth and destitution had long coexisted in stark contrast. The main reason that didn't happen can be summed up in one word, according to Monica de Ball, an expert on Brazil at the Peterson Institute for International Economics, corruption.